Hey, good afternoon, everyone. I am Pastor Jim, and we are here for another lunch recap, all right? Now, this particular one, this was the fifth message in the series of How to Hear God, and the title of this one I thought was very interesting here, but it's a point to think about here. And the title of this message was, Is God Blocking Me? Now, of course, again, it's the fifth message in terms of how to hear the voice of God. So just how to hear the voice of God, part five. So this is for somebody who is... If you're dealing with some type of difficult situation or you're having a hard time trying to process some things, this is probably going to be for you. All right, so let's start with our memory verse. And we've been talking about this memory verse for a few weeks now. So I'm sure you all know it, but it's in Job 33 and 14. And this is for God does speak now one way, now another, though man may not perceive it. God is saying something. God is always talking. God is speaking one way, now another. He talks this way, then the next time he may talk this way, then he may talk this way, then he may talk this way. But we are the ones who don't fully understand what he's saying and what he is doing. So last week, either from the lunch recap, if you watched the lunch recap, some of you may prefer those, or if you actually heard the full message, we talked about dreams and visions. And today, excuse me, today we are talking about a new category. So we were discussing the ways that God can speak. So we said, number one, that the Lord speaks through his word. The second one, that God speaks through people, through other people, through us and, and the other people that we interact with. We also talked about God speaking directly. And today we're going to deal with how God can speak through his actions. There are times when you may not necessarily hear the voice directly. It may not show up in a thought or in a dream or as you're reading the word or something that the Lord may bring you through somebody else. But he can also speak through actions. And I want to show you how he can do so. So I want to go to the description, Acts chapter 16, and I want to start in verse 6. So Acts 16 and 6 says this. After Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When it came to the border of Mycenae, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. Now, first off, before we go anywhere, y'all, don't butcher me over these names, okay? And, and, and in fact, when I read this again, I may say them different, okay? So y'all just go with me, all right? And if you need to break them down as in like place A, place B, place C, whatever it takes, because what we're trying to get to is not necessarily the places specifically, but certain things in this, all right? So again, let's actually read it one more time. Verse 6, Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. Verse 7, when they came to the border of Mycenae, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. Okay, Paul was traveling and he was spreading the word. And it says here in these two verses here that he had been two places, but it also says that he was being kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. The Holy Spirit was not allowing him to do so. They were attempting to go someplace to preach the word, but the Holy Spirit would not allow them to. And in verse seven, again, it says, when they came to the border of Mycenae, they tried to enter Bithynia. Don't judge me. All right, but the spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. What? The spirit of Jesus. So this is now saying twice that the spirit was not allowing them to go to a certain place. So, I asked this question, I'm going to ask you the question as well too. Have you ever felt like you were stopped from doing something that you thought was good? Have you ever been stopped from doing something you thought was good? And in hearing about all of this and in trying to realize exactly what was going on, it gave me questions. All right, I, maybe this gives you questions. And if it does, these are some of the things that, that go through my mind. See if they go through yours as well too. The question is, is that why was this wrong? Why did the Lord stop them from doing this? Why were they blocked? Because essentially, if they were prevented, I just, you know, I use the word blocked. They were blocked from doing this. Why were they blocked? Weren't they supposed to go to all of the world to teach the word? And then, God, my question to you is, why would you stop them from doing something that you told them to do? So I have two questions here. And let's try to answer these two questions together. The first one is this, is did the word need to be preached in Asia? Out of all places, did the word need to be preached in Asia? Of course it did. They were out there because they were told to go. Y'all, this description, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. All nations. You see that? Go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. All nations, which included Asia. 
And there's another one in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 and it says, You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That's everywhere. You will be my witnesses everywhere, which includes Asia. So the question was, was that were they supposed to stop once they got to Asia? No. The word says and what they're hearing from God, what they're hearing from Christ himself is saying that you will go to all places. So, yes, they were supposed to go there. But what about the next part here? The next question I had. We already established that they should be there. And the second one is this. Did God literally block them? And what I mean by that is it's almost like an invisible barrier. Like if they tried to push their way through, that God would push them back. Well, no, no, that's not the way that that particular thing went down. It doesn't look like that. Because could Paul have really gone to those places if he wanted to? Of course he could. There's a scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12, and it says, everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. It means that Paul could go wherever it is that he wanted and he could do what he wanted. But if he's trying to be in order with God, if he's trying to hear the voice of God and be led by the Spirit, he needs to listen to what the Spirit is telling him to do. Now, all of this is the setup for how this is going to affect that. So I hope y'all are following right now. They were supposed to go, but for some reason, God kept them from going. God blocked them from going there. So let's read it one more time. Acts chapter 16, verse 7 through 10. When they came to the border of Mycenae, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. Verse 8 says, so they passed by Mycenae and went down to Troas. Verse 9 says, during the night, Paul had a vision of a man in Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. Verse 10 says, after Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Now, if you remember from previous lunch recaps and messages, I actually used the second half of this story right here. It started at verse 10, but now we see how they got there, why they went to Macedonia in the first place. But God gave Paul a vision to go to Macedonia. He didn't give it to him immediately. He gave it to him later. Paul and his companions, they had plans for what it was that they want to, wanted to do, what they felt like God was calling them to do. But God didn't want them to do that. He had something else for them. And so based off of this, the, the, the big idea is this, is that God's timing is not our timing. Y'all do know that sometimes we can rush to do the right thing at the wrong time. We can have the best intentions, and if the timing is wrong, guess what? It's still wrong. God may not be ready for us to do something just yet. Paul may have been delayed because the people weren't quite ready for to hear him. It was the wrong time. But they were more needed somewhere else. Paul, you can't go to this particular place. Why can't you go to this particular place? Well, later on, you will find out that you are needed someplace else. So Paul was blocked, quote unquote, because someone in Macedonia needed him. And even though he could be doing the right thing, if you're doing the right thing in the wrong place, you're still doing the wrong thing. And so I put this on the board on Sunday and it said that God will keep you from doing certain things in certain places because somebody else needs you. You might be trying to put your attention on one thing, but God is trying to slow you down. God may be even blocking you completely because there's a greater need someplace else. And if God is doing it, sometimes the delays that we have or the things that don't work out in our favor are not always the devil. I said this on Sunday, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to say this again as well, too, that every delay is not a devil. God may be trying to stop us to, from doing some things that are not actually in his will for us. Yes, God, uh, he has these great things that he wants for us. But, you know, God may say, look, I, I want you investing, but not that particular investment because you're going to lose money. I want you to uh, have a new house, but not that particular house, because that particular house has things going on with it and you're going to lose money in this. I want you married, but not married to that particular person because y'all are going to be unequally yoked. I want you in a good paying job, but not that particular paying job because the job is not right for you or they're going to take you away from 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 your relationship with God. They're going to pull you away from your family. They're going to be doing a lot of things that you may not necessarily know. And it's not just the devil all the time because things don't work out, okay? Now, how do you find, or how do those particular things happen? Well, sometimes the circumstances don't line up the way that you would expect. And just what I said beforehand, because everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. You can do any one of these things that you want to, but that might not be the best course of action 
for you. God may be slowing you to try to slow you down and tell you, hey, this is not the move. This is not for you because God has better for you. How do I know that? Because we know what God says to us in Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So we already know that plan, that God's plans are designed to give us hope, to give us a future, to prosper us and not to harm us. Now, granted, we want good things for ourselves as well, too, but our plans don't compare to God. He knows more than what we do. And God, if he is stopping us, he's trying to help us because there's a greater need somewhere else or something better for us someplace else. Now, another thing that we noticed as well, too, was that if you go back to the original scriptures that we started in terms of God blocking Paul from where he was going, it just said that the Holy Spirit prevented them from going. Didn't say why. Paul didn't find out until later on what the what the actual reason was. He was needed in Macedonia, but at the moment, there was no explanation given. God didn't say anything. Paul just knew we can't go this way. God is not allowing us to be able to do so. God is blocking us for some odd reason. And so when, it, when you think about that, God didn't explain himself. And because he didn't explain himself, we could also take that to us as well too, to say that God doesn't owe us an explanation when he decides to move. I asked a question on Sunday about children. If you have children, one of the greatest questions you hear all the time from your children is, why? Now, sometimes it's because our children want to understand. Sometimes it's because our children want to find a better way to make it happen. I, I have a very, uh, my son, he's four years old and he can be very persistent about something that he wants to do. And if you tell him, or explain to him why he can't do certain things. He'll be like, well, what if we try it this way? Or what if we do it this particular way? And as a four-year-old, his logic is you know, sound enough. He's trying to figure out a way to get what he wants. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you know what? As a parent, we know better. As a parent, we know that you can't do certain things you're not supposed to. As a parent, we're the ones that are responsible for making sure that our children don't get themselves into actual trouble. And it's the same thing that our children do to us that we do to God. When God tells us that we can't have something or God tells us that this particular thing is not for us, we want to ask him why. We want to try to figure out, well, God, well, what if it went this way? God, what if we did it this particular kind of way? God, can we make it work if we do this? And God doesn't have time to go through all of that with us. He already knows the plans. What do we know? There's only so much that we know. God is the one who has our future in his hands. He can see into the future. He knows our end from our beginning. And he's the one that has the plans for us to prosper us, to not to harm us, to give us a hope in the future. He can see things down the line and we can't even see five minutes from now. But yet we want to help God try to rework his plans. God doesn't need us reworking his plans for us. Because no matter what we can do, no matter the best plan that we can come up with, it'll never be better than what God can do for us. There's a scripture here in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9, and the message version says this, We plan the way we want to live, but only God makes us able to live it. We might have good plans in terms of what it is that we want to do with our lives, but God is the one who is truly going to lead us into the things that are good for us. God told us he would lead and prosper us. That's what he said. He will lead and prosper us. Our job is to trust him. Our job is to follow him. Each day, God has something for us. Each day, we should be listening for what God has to say. Give us this day our daily bread. We should be looking to hear what God has to say. This day, we move this way. This day, we move this way. And when he speaks, God does tell us what we need to know. God may not be obligated to tell us everything. Because again, if he tells us too much, sometimes we want to go and rework his story for him. But he tells us what we need each day. And he gives us what, what we need. And he doesn't make it complicated. Y'all, I want to give you another one here. Matthew chapter 10, verse 11 through 14. Now, just y'all bear with me as I read this real quick. Matthew 10 and 11 says, Whatever town or village you enter, search for some worthy person there and stay at his house until you leave. Verse 12 says, As you enter the home, give it your greeting. Verse 13 says, If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. Verse 14 says, if anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet when you leave that home 
or town. Now, Christ could have been very, very specific. Okay, you go to this house, and you go to this house, you go to this house, you go down the street, go around the corner, then you go to this house. Or he could speak to them through the circumstances. Make it easy. Based on the circumstances, you do this. And that's what he did. He told him, he said, if the people want to hear it, stay and teach. If the people don't want to hear it, they don't have to. Go ahead and move on. If the people want to hear a particular thing, let them hear it. If they don't want to hear it, move on. He didn't tell us to, you know, for if you really like the people and they don't want to hear it, stay there and try to make them listen to you. He didn't say that. If they want it, let them have it. If they don't want it, then just move on. God is not trying to overcomplicate things for us. God kept Paul from going. Jesus told the disciples to try and move on. See, the, the real thing is this. God is very, very capable of making things easy. If things are too complicated, it's probably not God. Y'all, God is not trying to be a burden for us. He knows we're trying to hear him. But he's also trying to make sure to make things easy enough to where we don't start overthinking and overcomplicating things. Y'all know that overthinking and overcomplicating things is what, a, what really got Eve into trouble. God told her, don't eat the fruit. It was when she started looking at the fruit and she saw that it was pleasing to the eye, it was good for food, and then desiring for gaining wisdom. She was thinking about something that God had made simple. She overcomplicated it and it made her want it more. So she tried to rework God's plan in a way that God told her not to do. He said, don't do it. She did it anyway. God is not trying to make things difficult for us. He's not trying to be a burden. Y'all, Matthew 11 and 28 says this. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. 29 says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Verse 30 says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. All of this is saying that God is telling us to come to him so we can find our rest. He says he's gentle. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. He did not say, I'm overcomplicating things for you. You're going to have to come to me and worry about what I'm actually saying. No, that's not what he said. God wants to make things easy for us. We are the ones who make things complicated because at the end of the day, based on what God wants for us, and sometimes what we want are different things. We have our wills. I want to do what I want to do. God wants me to do what he has for me. Now I have to choose which one of them is better. Well, when you really think about it, God is the one that has the plans to prosper us and not to harm us. I said it already at the very beginning. God already knows what tomorrow looks like. God knows what the next 10 years look like. Me? I don't know what's going to happen five minutes from now. Do you? Best you can do is make a guess. God is the one who knows. So I have to learn to trust his plan, that his plan is actually better. If God is slowing me down from doing a particular thing, there's a reason why he's doing it. I have to try to find out what that thing is. You know, too often we try to force things to happen when God has already made it plain for us. God has made it simple. We're asking God, hey God, how can we make this particular thing work? He says, I already told you it won't. Stop trying to make this particular thing work. It's not going to work. God, no, there's a way we can get it to go this way. The same way our children do us. Now, some things may require prayer and fasting. Some things may require a little bit of work, but it's not supposed to be complicated. So, because God is not trying to confuse us. God is not trying to overcomplicate things with us. God is trying to lead us in a good way. How do we determine what God is saying when it seems complicated? Here's the first thing that I said. Number one was look at the current information that you have. What's happening? What, what's the whole story here? What is the decision I'm trying to figure out? What are the facts? Not future facts, not, not past facts. What are the current facts that we have right now, what we're trying to decide? What is it at this particular moment? Why is it complicated? What, what, is the, what is the problem? What's going on right now? Look at it. Don't judge anything based on future possibilities, y'all. Y'all really hear me. Don't judge something because of something that it can do tomorrow. Unless God told you specifically or it is a scientific fact, anything that is based on tomorrow is speculation. Tomorrow is not promised. We aren't promised to see it, and we surely can't promise what is going to happen. Anything that deals with tomorrow is speculation. Only God knows what's going to happen tomorrow. So that was the first thing. Look at the current information that you have. And the second thing is this. Look at each outcome. Look at the way that all, all of the different kind of ways that this thing could go. Look at that. What are all the different ways this can turn out from the top 
to the bottom and always keep in mind or at least the thought of what happens if I walk away from this? What happens if I walk away from the deal? Okay, well, you know, too many times we're trying to figure out how to how to make this particular house work, but we forget that we can walk away from it. Too many times we may have, uh, we may be praying to God for a job and a job opportunity to come up and they're not gonna pay us what we want or they're not gonna give things to us in a certain kind of way. It's too complicated to get what we need versus what they have to offer. Don't forget you can walk away. When you're out there looking for jobs, the first job that shows up does not necessarily mean that's from God. You can always walk away from it. You have to examine this because if things are getting difficult, there may be a reason why they're getting difficult. And then once you have that, once you have each outcome after you've looked, at, looked over all the current information, number three is this. Pray over each possible scenario for clarity. Is it God really making this thing difficult? Is us really making this thing difficult? Is this thing not really for us? We have to ask all of these individual questions. God, show me. Tell me what it is you're trying to say. I've thought about this. I've done my research on it. I have really looked at this situation here. Now I need you, God, to speak to me. And I do really believe that because God's designed plan for us is to prosper us and not to harm us, I fully, really do believe this. And I believe you all believe this as well too. If we miss something trying to follow God, He'll either lead us back to it or to something better. Y'all, I really do believe that. If you miss something trying to hear God and God knows your heart, you're missing it because you're looking for him, he'll bring it back to you or he'll take you to something better. But as a recap of the entire thing here, is God blocking me? Well, you got to look at it. What are the things that we're trying to get right now? What are, what are the decisions that we're trying to make? Are the decisions difficult? Um, is there a process to that particular thing? We got to stop blaming everything on the devil because God might be trying to talk to us to say that this isn't it. This is not for you. This is not what I want for you. He may be preventing you from going to a particular place, just like Paul, because he has someplace else he needs for you to be. He may be preventing you from getting certain things because he has something else that he wants to get for you. Whatever those particular things are, start paying attention. Look over all the information that you have, pray about it and see what God is trying to say to you. So if you're trying to hear God speak, remember that he does speak. We just got to listen. All right, so I, I pray that this message was a blessing to you, y'all. If it was, if you would give us a like and share it with somebody else. You can also come visit us um, at the Guiding Light Church, 1800 John Rogers Drive, Birmingham, Alabama, 35210. Our services start at 930. And you can also catch us on the different media platforms. We're on Facebook under the Guiding Light Church. We're on YouTube under the GLC TV. And we'll be streaming live at 930 uh, on Sunday mornings, all right? And, yeah, outside of that, Pray that you all have a blessed day. Y'all take care. We'll talk to you soon.